All right, welcome back to another video of making a modern looking WPF app. In our case, we're making a budget tracker. And if you like this kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe. That way you can follow along. And if this is the first video of this series that you're watching, I do have them all in a playlist so you can go back and watch from the very beginning and maybe follow along. Also, the code will be down below in my GitHub repo. I will have tags for each video so you can grab it from there if you get lost. And a lot of this stuff, you know, adding controls I've done ahead of time. And then we're just going to talk about styling and using my apps.metro um, and what you can do. So you might want to go grab that code if you are following along. And in the last video, we added the circular button with the plus. Let's just go ahead and show it. And we gave it a click event. So if I click on this button, this form now displays. And today we're going to talk about the form. And I'm also going to create a model for our budget. So we can hold objects of different budgets. And for now, they're going to just be stored in memory. But in the future, I would like to hook up a database so you can uh, come back to these budgets whenever. So a few things you might notice about these form fields. Um, well, by the way, the start date is the start of the budget that we're adding. The end date is the end of the budget. And then how much? Maybe it shouldn't say monthly budget. Maybe it should just say total budget now that I look at it. Because it doesn't have to be monthly, right? It can be any time frame. So let's change it to that. And for the start date, let's go ahead and remove these two my app styling. We'll talk about each one. So after I remove it and we go ahead and look at this, it no longer says start date, what we had before. Now it says select the date, which is the default watermark of the date picker in WPF. So if we want to add our own watermark, which is what I had before, if we look back at the XAML, we can do something like in the ma namespace, the text box helper dot watermark oh, dot watermark not dot dot watermark is equal to then i had start date as that watermark so if we save and we look now there's that watermark but notice if i go ahead and pick a date we no longer see that watermark anymore so what i would like is i would like the watermark to be a little bit smaller and just right above the date and we can do that by adding another property uh the mod namespace and then the same thing text box helper I know this isn't really a text box, but we still use um, the watermark from the text box helper because it still works in the date picker. And then use floating watermark, we can set equal to true. And now if we look right above the date, we have the watermark and it's floating right above this. And now you know, even with the date there, what this is for. You don't lose track of, okay, well, what was this field actually for? I forget. And now what I'd like to do is put a button below this so we can add this budget once we fill out all of this information. So at the bottom here, let's go ahead and add a button. Let's give it a name. So I'm going to say add budget button. Let's give it something to say. So add or maybe create budget. Maybe this should be called create budget button because the add button kind of is like that plus button above. So I don't want to get the two confused. And then let's give it a bit of a style. And here we're going to use some of the styling I showed back in the buttons video. So static resource my apps dot styles dot button dot square dot accent and now we have a create budget budget button below and if we notice it's actually a lower case it's not the casing that i have in the content so what we can do is back in the mod namespace the controls helper dot content character casing right here and we're going to say normal casing just how i have it written right here so if we look now the c and the b are uppercase all right, so now I'm going to add a folder to this project, and this is going to hold all of our models. So I'm going to name it models. And inside, let's go ahead and add a class called budget. Let's make this class public, public, and then we'll add a property. And the first one, I'm going to make ID for when we do get a database to store these in. It's not very useful right now. And then property, and this one's going to be a date time, and then uh, start 
date. And same thing, date time, except now it's end date. And lastly, we want a double to hold the budget amount. Budget amount. All right. So now I guess we want to add a click event to that button. And whenever that button's clicked, we will go ahead and take all of the information from the three fields above, put it into an object, and have that hold the information for this budget. So new button, new budget button click is going to be the name of our event. We'll go to the code behind here. Whoops, I didn't mean to hit that. I guess we want a new event handler. So create budget button click is going to be the name of our event handler. And before we go ahead and take all of the information, and of course, if you're doing this in real life, uh, in a real project, you want to do some validation to make sure um, the end date is you know, after the start date and the budget that they give you is numerical, but we're just going to assume for now because I don't feel like writing all of that. But like I said, if it's a real application that real people are going to use, you want to do all of those things. But I'm also going to add a list of budgets. So, but, oh my gosh, budget. And let's name this budgets and then in the constructor of the main window we can say budgets is equal to is equal to a new list of budget and this is just going to hold all of the budgets that we add but whenever the app is killed it's going to lose all of those budgets and that's where a database would be handy and now we can say budget budget is equal to a new budget and we can go add all of the fields. So start date is going to be equal to, if we look, we have the name right here, start date picker. Start date picker dot, what is it, selected date. And it's going to throw a fit unless we cast it to a date time. And I guess we need commas, not semicolons. And then end date, I'm basically just going to copy this. And instead of start date picker, we can do end date picker. And then budget amount is going to be equal to a double dot parse. And we're going to parse the text box, which is named month budget text box. I guess we also don't want that to say month. So total budget text box dot text. So now this budget object is going to hold all of our budget data and we can say the budgets list dot add and add that newly created budget. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. So when we run it and add a budget, we can look at the list and make sure that it made it in there and all the data is correct. So let's go ahead and uh, make a fake budget. Say the start date is the first, the end date is 31st, and my total budget is 500 bucks or whatever. Let's say create budget. And if we look at the list, we have over the list of budgets and we expand that. The first one here, 500, uh, the end date, which is what we put, start dates what we put and obviously we don't have an ID we never set that it's not really useful in this case it's going to be more useful when we have a database because that'll be the primary key and now let's add a second one let's change the dates a little bit let's say the 8th and the 15th and let's give this 1200 create that budget now if we over over the list of budgets there's two and if we look at the second one um, that's the information that we gave it. So now we have a nice little model to hold all of our data into one object. Something I'm going to do in the next video is display a flyout that says the budget has been created successfully. When we go ahead and create the budget down here, maybe we will add a little validation because, uh, if not, maybe we want the flyout to say, please check, you know, this total budget text box or this end date, something is wrong. And you'll see what a flyout is in the next video. It probably doesn't make much sense now, uh, but stay tuned for that. I hope to see you, and thanks for watching.